Denmark consistently makes the list of the happiest countries year after year. But why is that? Journalist Helen Russell spent a decade living there and raising her three children. She says it appears to start in childhood. Danish children eat differently, learn differently, play, dress, and even sleep differently. She shares what she has learned about the culture in her new book, The Danish Secret to Happy Kids, How to Viking, the Viking Way of Raising Children Makes Them Happier, Healthier, and More Independent. And Helen joins us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be here. It seems that, you know, in the U.S., you know, you know the term helicopter parents, we're kind of hovering and protecting our, our kids. And it seems like over there, everybody just does whatever they want to do. Is can you get away with it over there because it's it's a safer place to live? What what are they letting their kids do? Absolutely, a smaller country. So there is a lot more time spent in nature. There's a health service. So if you do break an arm, you are going to get some help. But yes, it's just being out in nature, whatever the weather, whether it's sleet, snow, anything, my three kids are out there. And in school, everything is even different, right? They, they, they start school later. It's an emphasis on play. Talk about test taking. Talk about all that. Yeah, so from the country that brought us Lego and Hans Christian Andersen, it's no surprise, play prioritised. Children play until they're age six in Denmark, until they're seven in Finland. And even then, there's not so much book learning. It's much more about playing, learning to collaborate, public speaking a little bit, learning to find your voice and use it and question authority. So kind of tiring in the short term, but it feels like it's worth it in the long run. They do grow up very independent, happier, healthier. So at some point, are they behind when they're trying to learn to become a doctor or a lawyer or, you know, an engineer? I mean, at some point you have to, you know, prepare yourself for that world. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, we still have doctors and lawyers here. So yeah, by the age of 15, the, all of the OECD studies show that Nordic children have come to the same level or even surpassed kids in the US and the UK, and they are happier and healthier as a result. So they kind of get there in the end. And a lot of studies from Cambridge University in the UK, where I'm from, now show that learning through play and learning a little later can really help, has no negative impact long term. So it's well, been fascinating to find this out. Do you feel like that will catch on in, you know, America and maybe they'll, you know, as we're starting preschool at three years old, four years old, and I don't know yeah. if that's just because parents need someplace to have their kids, you know, when you need childcare sometimes. Uh, do you see an influence of that coming back this way? I think I've been really heartened by the support and the interest in this book. And I also like to point out that the Nordic approach isn't just altruism. They're not just doing it to be touchy feely and nice. They're doing it because it makes sense. It, it makes sense from a bottom line. You know, businesses work better if, if parents have a work life balance, if they support parents and children are happier too. So you're, you're less, um, you know, you have less future problems, I guess, if you are allowed to have this adventurous risky play from a quite early age. So it seems to be working. Are they able to keep their kids off social media and, and off their phones. It's interesting. We live in a, in a global world and Denmark is not immune to that by any means. So no, I mean, this sort of screen time thing is still an issue in the Nordics, just as it is elsewhere. But what I would say is that Danish children tend to have many more activities and hobbies. So at least they have something else to do, somewhere else to be. And they're used to being turfed outside or going in part of the bike club or part of the swimming club. So they have other things in their sort of their toolbox that they can be using. There's this interesting thing they do with teens. They go to this boarding school to prepare for the real world. Talk about that. Isn't this amazing? Yeah, so maybe age 14, age 14 to 16 for a year, you'll go to something called an after school, where it's like uh, adult life with training wheels. You learn how to do your own laundry, how to do cooking, how to do cleaning. Um, and teachers always say that when they spot kids that come back into higher education after this experience, they are much more grounded, they're much more centered. They haven't done that much of the academics that year, but they're, they're really grown up, they're quite adult and um, yeah, quite confident to go out there in the world. So it feels like a great, institution. I'm, I'm really keen on that one. Hmm. Over here, paying for health care and your retirement are two big pressures on our society. How is that handled there? 
So in Denmark, you're pre you're paying very high taxes. I won't lie to you there. You're paying high taxes, but it's funding the healthcare system, which is free at point of use in Denmark. You're, it's funding the education system all the way up to university. You can get paid to go to university o over the age of 18. You get paid to study. Um, and retirement, yeah, if people have been paying into a pension their whole life, they are well supported there as well. So it all sort of evens up in the end. Yes, they're paying high taxes in the short term, but they get so much for it, they figure it's worth it. Is there any comparison studies being done in addition to kids being happy or maybe happy adults, but are they as successful as children who are learning earlier in other parts of the world? Yeah, that's a great question. And actually, again, these OECD studies show that children are at the same level, if not more advanced. And um, you just look at kind of productivity for Denmark. You look at the people who are coming out of these countries. Denmark is the second most productive country in, in Europe. It's the fourth most productive in the world. So they're no slouches. They they learn to apply themselves. They learn to work. Um, you know, the, the idea of the 10,000 hours rule whereby, whereby you have to really work at something to become good. Well, another part of that study showed that rest is important as well. The most successful people are resting more. And I feel like the Nordics get that part really right. They get the work life and the balance. But can I ask you, because I've never been there, I think in America we think, well, if I work harder, I'll have maybe a nicer house or a bigger house or more cars or a nicer car. Over there, is everybody, regardless of what they've achieved, is everybody just kind of living in the same house? Of course, there's there's variations in in wealth and, and variations in, in you know, the status that people have, but it's much more of an egalitarian society. So, for example, it's normal for the CEO and the cleaner to maybe be in the same uh, sports club together. There's less hierarchy. So, I think people are paying these taxes, but they are they are sort of living together with a lot more trust because there's less of a, a fear that your neighbor's going to rob you to put food on their table because your basic needs are kind of taken mm. care of. So, it, it's still there, but it feels less apparent than when I've lived in the US, in the UK and I've worked in the US a little. Oh, it's interesting. The book is The Danish Secret to Happy Kids, How the Viking Way of Raising Children Makes Their Happier, Healthier, and More Independent. For more, you can check out Helen's website or follow her on social media. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, Helen. Thanks so much.